you know, it's strange how things sometimes uh, end up working out. I, I have a, I'll have a guest on the air, and uh, then we don't hear from the guest for a few uh, few months, and then some events come along, and you have the guest on twice in a week, uh, which is the case with our next guest. We're at fifty eight. It's eight thirty four on Magic Valley this morning, on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX and News Radio thirteen ten dot com. Uh, we're joined uh, during this segment of the program by Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil. He's retired from the United States Air Force. He was with us just a week ago talking about uh, the death of uh, John, McC- uh, John McCain. I'll get that out, who uh, the colonel was uh, acquainted with when he was working as the Air Force liaison to Capitol Hill back in the 1980s. But he also, during the 1980s, uh, near the end of his military career, he was the administrator of the Shuttle Challenger Commission. Uh, this is the commission that uh, that looked into that great tragedy uh, that befell uh, the U.S. space program with the explosion of the Challenger shortly after liftoff. And among the co-chairs who were serving on that uh, that commission uh, were astronaut Sally Ride and Neil Armstrong. There's a new movie out about Armstrong called First Man. It's generating some controversy because in the movie, uh, you do not see the planting of the American flag on the moon because Hollywood liberals say it was, well, a world event and not so much an American event. Uh, Bill Colley with you till 10 a.m. today. wanted to point that out as well. Colonel, first of all, welcome back to the show. Well, it's good to be back so soon again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was reading uh, the Chuck Yeager comments about this over the weekend, and Yeager, uh-huh. Yeager pointing out that he knew Neil Armstrong and said uh, Neil was very much an American and not a citizen of the world. I think that's what he was trying to point out. Uh you had some time working with him alongside him on the commission 30 some years ago uh, when you, when you heard that the the scene uh, what, there was no scene whatever of the flag being planted what was your take on that well i think neil armstrong is going to raise uh, rise up out of the <laughs> the grave and make a statement from that uh, soon that says uh, i am totally appalled by what this movie is portraying and the way it's portraying me, because it is like so much out of Hollywood, and this is even out of Canada. This isn't even an American movie, as I understand it. Uh, and so he he would be appalled. Well, you you mentioned yeah. that you know you have people in Hollywood, and if you're going to have a character who's uh, who who plays somebody who's uh, you know. Well, we used to call them transvestites or transsexuals. I guess they call them transgenders now. But the Hollywood liberals demand that someone who was already identifies that way play that role, for instance. And yet you mm-hmm. have a Canadian playing an American in this movie. I'm not saying that's wrong. He may have been the most talented guy available. But but right off the top, it just it just seems strange. Why didn't why didn't they pick a Russian to play him or someone from Japan or someone from Guatemala, but they picked someone who was not even an American to handle that major role. Right. Well, it's, uh, and it's because the underlying theme is not certainly to really focus on or, again, bring up the uh, what, what an achievement it really was that, at the time and how much Neil Armstrong uh, is identified with it, but even more so now that he's gone. Uh, and by the way, you know, you want to talk about an American hero that got absolutely no <laughs> acclaim or a, or a six-day funeral memorial uh, only because that wasn't his style. But again, uh it, there are a hell of a lot more heroes out there than the one we just saw uh, <laughs> honored ad nauseum. Well, you yeah, know, uh, working alongside Armstrong on the, the commission, I know there wasn't a lot of time for socializing and the like, but, uh, you know, he, he had served his country in the military. One of the reasons these people had signed up in the astronaut program was because they saw it as adventure, I'm sure, but again, it was all part of the service to a country which at the time was the only country capable of going to the moon. Yeah, and that's the other uh, appalling thing to me, 
that uh, they left the flag out uh, of the movie and with the statement or that, well, this was a, a worldwide event and a worldwide achievement. And, and it was an American achievement. Nobody else in the world put a dime into making this happen. The 400,000 people who over time worked to make this happen were all Americans. And Neil Armstrong certainly was one of the most patriotic Americans uh, that I've had the honor and privilege to know. And so it's just another way to diminish the United States and, and all part of the social <laughs> liberal socialist plot to destroy America as we know it. We've got, to take a sh- We've got to take a short break. Can you stick around? Sure. I know that I, I posted to some folks uh, in your hometown that you're going to be on the air, so they're they're going to be trying to be calling you too. And but uh, I'm going to make them wait. <laughs> <laughs> After what they did to okay. me, they deserve it. Uh, we've got more coming up with Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil in just a couple of minutes. Short break though. First on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. And uh, well, the temperature's bouncing around, but we'll call it 55. I was just uh, chatting off air with uh, our guest, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil. Uh, he's retired from the U.S. Air Force. It's 8:43. We're at 57 on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And uh, Colonel, of course, spent uh, 20 years in the Air Force. Uh, was affiliated as the executive officer with the Air Force Thunderbirds. Also spent some time as the Pentagon's, uh, uh, the Air Force at least, uh, the Pentagon, of course, is home to many branches of the service. But while he was stationed at the Pentagon with the Air Force, he was the liaison to Capitol Hill, where he had contact uh, with members of both the House and Senate. And then uh, he wrapped up his career serving on the Shuttle Challenger Commission as the administrator, uh, while the co-chairs were Sally Ride and Neil Armstrong and we, we might want to point out something because Colonel, I, you know, you're a humble man like Armstrong in many ways too. But uh, Armstrong and Sally Ride were there because they they were recognizable names, so they would bring attention to the commission and the commission's work. But the administrator, he did most of the heavy lifting, from what I gather. Well, uh, well, I do have to say that. Uh, they were not just uh, they being Armstrong and uh, Sally Ride. They they weren't just window dressing. I mean they they really were out around the country and visiting and interviewing and looking at records and uh, really in, involved with the uh, investigation, other than just like I say being two pretty faces for the media, if you will. Uh, Armstrong wouldn't have stood for that anyway, and neither would Sally Rides. We had a hard time getting Sally to even let us mention uh, in uh, on the bio that was part of the final report that she was the first woman in, in space. Uh, the chairman had to basically order her to do to let them let us say that, but so they were both really shun publicity and very dedicated, and so you know, and particularly Armstrong, uh, and he was a humble guy. He, he and that was part of the reason they they chose him. Uh, they knew that he wouldn't go out and capitalize on his fame and and demean it or diminish it by. Uh, becoming a commercial product if you will i just and, well i just i just was reading where the uh, producers of the film have uh, found some of the surviving members of his family to come forward and say that oh neil wouldn't have been bothered by a lack of a scene of him planting a flag and the media has jumped all over that it but you know that's on the other hand i think the family could just as well say that he would have enjoyed seeing that scene in the movie too but the media is using that to counteract any criticism of the fact that they're trying to remove the American accomplishment from this. But when Buzz Aldrin probably knew him as well as anybody, I mean, after all, they were stuck in a little tinfoil uh, uh, pouch for a few days alone <laughs> together. 
several million yeah. miles away. And uh, and and Aldrin has come out and said that Neil would would not have liked this. And then, obviously, he was he was well acquainted um, with some other people who we we probably know, like Chuck Yeager, and Yeager was among well, Chuck, the first. Chuck, Chuck was uh, Yeager was one of the uh, Challenger Commission uh, commissioners as well, along with Sally and uh, <clears throat> Neil. So. He, uh, if he didn't know Neil before that, he got to know him during that period of time for sure. Now, maybe a lot of younger Americans have forgotten Jaeger, but even as recently as 20 years ago, he was, I mean, he was just this iconic figure in American history. And when he spoke out against the decision to remove the flag ceremony from the, uh, from the, from the film, I didn't hear a lot of media coverage of that. In other words, I guess they decided if they just ignored what Jaeger said, uh, that he would go away and and the controversy would uh, would would shrivel up and blow yeah. away as well. Well, I, I just it it goes beyond belief to me that if in fact they did talk to, uh, I think it was primarily one of uh, Neil's son uh, that said allegedly said that Neil would not have cared. Uh, I, that is. Why would you want to diminish the achievement of your father uh, by saying, "Well, you know, it wasn't wasn't just about him, but it and it wasn't, but he symbolized uh, the whole space program, and and it was a very patriotic uh, event, if you will. It raised the morale and the spirit in, in America, like." Nothing has for a very long time, and now they want to tear it down. I was just a kid in school when I think I was, uh, gosh, I wasn't even in the second grade yet when the first moon landing took place. But when we were going to school and, and as kids, I mean, these were major events whenever any rocket took off, uh, which was for a time it was called Cape Kennedy and then reverted to Cape Canaveral. But I remember these being huge events, and... It was an American achievement, and it was what we were proud of. It's what the president, what President Kennedy, had set out to do within a decade, and and it was all mm-hmm. in. It was part of the, you know, it was part of the Cold War. It was to prove our system was better than the other guys, and uh, and you knew John Glenn as well. So you look back at all of this. I don't. The problem is modern film audiences will go see this, and I think a lot of them aren't going to understand exactly how this is if it's even a, it may not be a, an attempt to diminish the achievement but well i think it is but uh, you know it you, is. you've got to look at that you see young people out there and they won't maybe uh, they, they'll take this and and they, they, they won't have the context of what happened how, why it happened well at the time and for many years after that that was certainly one of the most iconic uh, photos uh, that was out there regarding the balloon manning. Obviously, the first was when uh, Neil Armstrong's foot hit the uh, surface of the moon. But then the second most uh, iconic of all the pictures was he and Aldrin placing the flag and saluting it on the moon. And to take it out now is just uh, a travesty. Uh, it's, it's beyond that. And it's just a clear, clear <laughs> means by which to again diminish the uh, the United States in the eyes of the world. We've got about uh, nine minutes away from nine o'clock, and uh, I'm going to call it fifty nine. Uh, our guest is Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil. Uh, he's retired from the U.S. Air Force, and he served with Neil Armstrong on the Shuttle Challenger Commission. Bill Colley with you as well on Magic Valley this morning. Until 10 a.m. We've got a caller with us. Caller, you're on the air with Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, do we have a direct quote from this family member? Because you know how the traditional media twist things. He may have said that Neil is a humble man and wouldn't want a lot of recognition. And they twisted it around to say that he wouldn't care. Well, I, I really think you're. I think you're exactly uh, right on with that. Uh, 
observation. Uh, like I say, why would Neil Armstrong son uh, diminish his, what his father did and what it meant to the country by saying, oh, well, he wouldn't care whether uh, uh, they used the flag or the scene from the, uh, in, in the movie. And so it, it's, I don't believe it. I really don't believe it. Now, uh, there was a movie out uh, back in the middle of the 1990s about Apollo 13. And I remember hearing where many young people weren't even aware that we had gone to the moon numerous times, which is why mm-hmm. I think that you have to you have to include the fact that this was a United States effort, overwhelmingly a U.S. effort. And, and, and Because even 20 years ago, young people weren't aware of that all of this had taken place. And, and, and so people... People forget. I don't know. Maybe they don't teach it in schools any longer. I doubt it. I, I given what I mean, they they are so hell bent on rewriting history and rewriting so much of out of our history that was beyond anything that uh, I mean. We were the the envy of the world for a long while, and it was because of all of our achievements, but. Our achievements also benefited the rest of the world at our expense, and uh, but you don't hear, you don't want to hear that anymore. And we're the bad guys now, so it didn't mean anything. You knew you knew one of the fellows in Apollo thirteen as well. Uh, yeah, uh, Swagger, Jack Swagger. Um, I got I met him in Las Vegas when. Uh, at the uh, Thunderbird reunion, and he actually gave me a lot of uh, memorabilia that was actually in the uh, Apollo 13 capsule, because all the astronauts that went to the moon got to take a patch and a napkin and uh, an American flag and a matchbook, some other things that they could then go back and hand out their friends and say, hey, this was on the moon. And this never made it to the moon, but probably is, <laughs> it, it, almost as uh, famous in a way uh, than, than that. So, yeah, I, I did get to meet Swigert. You know, speaking of people you did know, you had a post over the weekend, and then I, I, I saw where you said you didn't really want to talk much more about the McCain funeral and how it became so politicized, but you had a post over the weekend where you referenced that you also knew some of his fellow POWs personally, and uh, none of them, because it couldn't be politicized, none of them got the same treatment in their deaths or will that he got. Yeah, one of them actually was uh, one of my uh, Thunderbird uh, teammates. Uh, he was spent time there, and then uh, George it, Day. Yeah. Day, it, yeah. Uh, he he really, uh, and I got to meet, I met him when I was working at the Pentagon. I mean, they really worked him over. It was uh, it was terrible what he said to happened to him. And you know, but and he he didn't he didn't break. <laughs> uh, not that I hold it against McCain that he finally did break. Because it's true, every man has his breaking point, uh, unless you can commit suicide. And but that's even a breaking point. But uh, but the, all those people that spent time, the, the, the 590 other people, uh, they're just as much a hero. <laughs> you know, once you get captured and then thrown into the Hanoi Hilton or wherever it was. You really didn't have any other choice but to be a hero, because <laughs> whether you wanted to or not. Yeah, you you you, you served with uh, in the Thunderbirds with what Dan Cherry. Dan Cherry, uh, but uh, Jim Latham was the uh, Thunderbird, uh, my other okay. teammate, who went on to become a, a Brigadier General himself, and. Uh, and then, and then became the commander leader. I've got, to, I've got to say that uh, we're dealing with a culture right now 
that needs a good bracer, a bit of a wake-up call after uh, whether it be related to the McCain funeral and the other POWs or to the life of Neil Armstrong and uh, the planting of the flag. Uh, it just seems that we're, we're somewhat rudderless at the moment. Well, and I think, obviously, that's by design. Uh, the, and, it, and it goes back from so much to our schools today because they're not making our next generations uh, aware of just what America used to be <laughs> and and what it did for the, the world uh, over so many years. And now they're not even, so it's just a place they live now. And they think this is the way it is. Uh, it's not their fault. I got, I've got to say, uh, it may take a couple more generations to get this straightened out if we started today. Oh yeah, if if we can ever reverse it, I you know I, I think it's going to take another nine eleven to, uh, unfortunately, and I'm not sure, given today's political climate and uh, that it, we would re- react across the country. Uh, in the same way as we did the 9-11, which brought everybody together in a patriotic spirit. Uh, I'm not sure that that would happen today. In just less than 20 years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Well, Colonel, I want to say thank you again. Uh, I was joking with him uh, during the break that two of my old friends are hosting talk shows in his hometown, and uh, they may be calling you because they, they saw my post that you were going to be on the air. And they get, <laughs> they get a little jealous of me from time to time. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll throw in a little pitch for you that uh, you are now acting as my yeah. agent. At the, ne- the and, next, uh, <laughs> next old geezers reunion, you can remind Jake of that. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'll do that. On the uh, 13th of this month, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you again, Bill. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil joining us this morning. Uh, we've got a short break and then a guest coming up talking with us about, uh, well, Family Matters Weekend. Maybe that's a good place to start turning the culture around. It's 9 o'clock. News is next.